Hey guys, this is Drew from Cyclone Gunworks. Just wanted to give you all some tips and tricks today on how to do the Glock 25 cent trigger job. Um, this does take roughly a half a pound out of your trigger pull, but it's actually more about having a more smooth, buttery pull. Okay, you're going to have a more fluid break through that wall of your trigger, and you're actually going to have a more crisp, audible reset with your trigger also. Uh, you'll actually also get a smoother action um, when you're racking that slide by hand, um, as well as just overall performance of your firearm. Okay, um, so as usual, I'm going to go over the techniques I like to use and show you the tools I like to use to get the job done. All right, so starting with the basics, you of course will be needing a Dremel. Okay, um, you will also be needing a microfiber cloth. Okay, doesn't matter what size it is. Uh, just microfiber seems to work the best with polishing. Okay, uh, you're definitely going to need eye protection because over here you have your polish. Now, when you get that Dremel rotating, polish is going to fly everywhere, so be mindful of that when you're uh, deciding on your work area. Um, now, going on to the last thing you'll need is your polishing tip. Okay, here are a few different tips that people like to use. This cone's pretty good because the tip of it will get inside the nooks and crannies as well as you can use all this for the surface areas uh, you know getting quick coverage same goes for this um, but you don't have that little tip now this is for super accurate nooks and crannies although it does not have the same coverage as these other two tips which is why we come down to this one now this here is my favorite um, and by the way these are all nylon it's just like fabric okay now this one here is my favorite it's more firm than these two, uh, which allows me to work quicker with it. It seems to be more abrasive, but not too abrasive where it's going to damage your surface area. Okay. It also has a flat rounded head that allows me to get into the nooks and crannies as much as I need to. So this is definitely my favorite. Okay. Um, so when you're doing this, um, you will see when you apply your polish, I like to dab a little bit on the parts that I'm working with and then a dab a little bit on my tool and then I run my Dremel real quick to get all the uh, extra polish off and then I make contact with my part. One thing you do want to um, know is that when you make contact with the parts you are going to start to see a lot of black residue build up on this and the part. That is normal, okay? That's a chemical reaction from the polishing that's happening with the polished compound, okay? It just makes black cream. Um, now in between uh, what you want to do is, like I said, apply to your part and the wheel, and then you want to go to your contacts. And in between, once you're, you don't want to run dry, so when you hit an area, you're going to see the residue build up, and you'll see your tip start to dry out a bit. At that point, you want to do a quick wipe down of your part, and then you want to, again, dip your part, re-hit it. You'll start to see a nice chrome finish, as you'll see here, and I'm about to show you. By the way, guys, at the end of the video, I will be showing you before and after, um, showing you that hard carbon machined look, the darker metal that comes out of the factory because the manufacturers just quite frankly can't afford to do this with every gun. And then you're going to see that compared to the chrome finish that you can do yourself at home instead of buying a $150 competition style trigger kit that really all it is for the most part is polished parts. Good luck guys and stay tuned for my tips and my techniques. The key to a good quality polish job on your trigger housing is knowing where to polish okay um, the main areas you want to polish are going to be the areas that have metal on metal contact the friction points okay so I'm going to point out to you right now um, on your trigger connector this area right here is where the inside of your trigger bar rides along so this end breaks off of this ledge point being this area right here is a must okay Anything else is cosmetic. I tend to do the entire part just because I like how it ends up looking. I like the finish you get. But right here, okay, about a centimeter, at least halfway up your connector, all the way to this ledge, and up in this area too, up to the ledge. Your safety plunger. You want to get the entire, the top of it and the edge of the top. If you have the Gen 4 and prior, uh, you'll have the rounded plunger. You'll have a flat top with a 40, uh, an angled, excuse me, um, 45 degree angled ledge that you want to hit and then the side same as this one I like to do the entire safety plunger because where it sits in the firearm is a little slot a hole it goes up and down so getting this polish is going to allow it to depress 
and engage when it's making contact and the trigger is working. It's going to flow up and down almost like a piston movement through that port uh, cleaner. On your trigger bar, the main part is here on this face, okay? Because this ledge right here makes contact right here with your trigger bar. What happens is this slips off of this ledge like that, allowing your trigger bar to go forward and your firing pin then strikes the round. So right here is the most important part here. Again, you can do all this if you want for cosmetic reasons. Uh, if you're going to do this, why not go all out? Now, on the trigger bar, the most important area is the inside right here where it makes contact with your trigger connector. So you want to get this entire area, anything past this ledge is cosmetic. Now, if you're trying to do the bare minimum of work, um, what you can do is hit the top also, okay? Because once this slips off the ledge of your crucifix, it then rides along the top here. So you want to get there too, okay? You also want to get right here, the face of the crucifix where it actually slips off the ledge here, okay? You also want to get this part of the trigger bar, this small ledge, the face here, because that's what interacts with your safety plunger, okay? Another spot I like to make sure I hit, which again, I usually do every part, um, but if you're going to do a minimalist job, you want to also get here, because it does hit, it, it rides along the side of your frame when it's installed in the firearm. Uh, with Gen 5s, it does kind of ride along the ambidextrous slide as well. So again, these are the main points that you must hit, okay? Right here on your trigger connector, right here where the bar hits the connector, your safety plunger head, and the face right here of your trigger pin.